What are you doing? I'm picking more vegetables. Look at you. You've been busy. What do you think about those tomatoes? What about that, babe? It's I, I think this is a good opportunity to share with everybody our electroculture gardening results. Now, we've had a drought, we've had a flash drought, and then we've had rain for days and days. But our peppers are slacking a little bit, but look at these tomatoes. These are our indeterminate jet stars. And I just have to keep folding them over and keep them run across the top of the baskets. They've even started making again on the bottom. We've been picking the ones on the bottom that's turning ripe. The Amish paste. Oh my. Look how many times I have came in here and pruned these to stop them from growing. And just look what's happened. They're just taking over. But I'm not going to complain about that. One thing for sure, we've had a bumper crop on tomatoes this year. So we've sure been blessed some way with it, whether we had enough rain or not enough rain, but the drip irrigation is definitely something that you'll wanna consider if you're gonna try to have a, a good garden in an unknown climate, whether it's gonna rain or whether it's gonna be a drought. Without the drip system, we would've probably lost a lot of these plants. But look, they're still putting on good tomatoes. Look here all the way up. That's going to be another pound tomato, close to it, three quarters before it's ripe. And they're still putting on tomatoes all the way. And we had that big rainstorm last night. Before that, all these tomatoes were eight and nine feet tall. And they're still just putting on all the way up. They're not as big as the, the first ones, but... There you go, there's your results of electroculture tomatoes. And I've been picking what, uh, one of these a day now, and this is the end of August. It is hot, but these dudes are still putting on, look at the balloons. I, um, I use calcium nitrate, liquid calcium nitrate in the fertilize one more time and that's three times i've done that this year but i think they've got some uh, pretty good results and goodness we have give away and give away and give away tomatoes everybody we've carried them up and down the road and from city to city and everybody has came and got tomatoes and that was after we got tired of picking tomatoes we and, canned a few. and canning tomatoes too yeah it was like the pickles. We got pickled out pretty quick too, didn't we? Boy, yeah. say that fast three times. <laughs> we put up a lot. Sure have, but we like pickles. And green beans. Those tomatoes in a jar are really great. In they the winter are. time, you can make soup. You or... know, the best thing that I like about canned tomatoes is in January, and you want to make a soup or something, and you pop that top. You can make spaghetti. And you smell that garden. Anything that you use tomato sauce yes. for or tomato paste for, you can use those tomatoes. Our peppers are not doing like they should. There's a little sun blister, but uh, we still, well, we've gotten caught we'll get quite something a few. out of them. Back to the tomatoes, what would you estimate? I don't know how it would be the best way to estimate by day or by week, but in a week's time, how many tomatoes would you estimate that we picked and delivered or canned in pounds because these are you you know people don't they kind of underestimate how much a pound is yes now it takes a really good size tomato to make a pound that's probably a half a pound but it takes a big tomato to make a pound um when they first started coming in we were picking 25 pound a day and then it went to 50 pound a day and so between what we were eating, you know me, I like tomatoes. Oh yeah, I've never seen anyone eat three or four per sitting. I like tomatoes. Breakfast, lunch, and dinner. But between what we ate, what we canned, and what we continuously give away every day, we probably got up to one point of, I know one day I picked a hundred pound in one day out of this garden. Yes. 44 plants. I witnessed it. And every day, this is today, 
So there's a good 35, 40 pound between those two baskets. And I haven't even got to the other side of these Amish peas. Yeah, not counting the ones on the counter and the yeah. baskets inside. So we've been blessed. We really have. It's been a good year for our tomatoes. It's been a good year for our cucumbers, our beans. And uh, so we hope to extend the garden and uh, do some more pots and containers. And we've got some ideas and we're gonna try to extend what we can do with electric culture. And we're gonna try different methods and we're gonna find out what works best in our area. And we're gonna go with that. But this is the results. And as we talked about back in the spring when I first started planting everything, I didn't want to show everybody what we were doing to plant this. I wanted to show you my results. And this next year, I'm going to show you everything that I do from start to finish. And it's pretty simple. There's no secrets to it. But for this area and the jet stars, they seem to be pretty um, resilient to a lot of different pests and diseases. I've had to spray them with neem oil a few times because of aphids. I've used BT once because of the army worms. And I get out here with the black light and find the the tomato worms. That's oh, fun. Got though. A great I like doing video. that. That's a lot of fun. That's a good date night <laughs> worm picking with, yeah. with the black light. <laughs> yeah, what we're we doing tonight, honey? We're worm picking. <laughs> but you know, a long time ago when I was a kid, um, I can remember just to have something to do the farmer would come by and he'd say hey y'all want to go out with a flashlight and pick some worms and we go to the back tobacco fields and pick those worms yeah now a lot of my tomatoes i missed them but you know what that sure is some have you ever had fresh country eggs that tasted a bit like tomatoes <laughs> the chickens like them don't they yeah the chickens love them and all the the chickens that are coming up. But I'm gonna tell you another thing. I wanna share this with everybody. These are the Sweet 100 cherry tomatoes. And these are, in my opinion, the best of the best. Now, they may not grow well in different zones, but for here, look at these dudes. They just keep putting on and keep putting on. As a matter of fact, there's only four plants. And I don't mind picking vegetables. I pick a lot of vegetables. But I'm tired of picking cherry tomatoes. <laughs> I'm about tired of picking real tomatoes, and that's sad. It really is, but I'm not going to let them go to waste. I'm going to pick them, and if nothing else, we'll give them away or whatever. But I hate to see anything go to waste. Our yellow squash finally played out. I picked some pumpkin-sized zucchini squash the other day that was that long. But anyway, I just want to, to just... Let everybody know that I know there's been some comments and some people are questionable about electroculture, but I like to try any method. And if it looks like it's going to work, then I stick with that and try to improve on it. And folks, I've been doing this a long time. It works. I'm not saying that my tomatoes look better than anybody else, but they sure have produced. And this is a, it's really been a good year, a bumper year, but still, my tomatoes usually do pretty good. Everybody that knows me knows yes. that if you want fresh tomatoes, they know where to go. But anyway, next year we have a different plan on that. We're going to build a country store, right? Yes. A country vegetable store. Yes, and honey. <laughs> on the honor system. Right. <laughs> so anyway, um, just look back through here. And this is after that storm. We had three inches of rain yesterday. And these tomatoes have been, the plants have just beat down from all that rain. But goodness, they're still making blooms and they're still making tomatoes. Well. And they should do, they should continue to make tomatoes all the way to frost. If nothing comes in here, I mean, it's had the blight that follows up. And that's one of the things, here's an example. A lot of people might say, well, my plants just died. Well, in reality, it's really supposed to do this. The foliage is gonna to continue to die all the way up to the plant. This plant could be eight, nine feet tall, be green at the top, and just dead leaves all the way to the bottom. So that's not such a bad thing. But now if it's a disease, it's gonna go all the way through the plant. The mountain fresh are about played out. That's the determinant ones that we planted. 
but now I like them because they're pretty tolerant to the heat. They, I had, they, they made pretty good tomatoes. Um, nice, firm, round tomato, even skin, no splits, nothing oblong, just a really good round tomato. But anyway. The bell peppers are doing well. Yeah, the bell peppers are just going so crazy. And the hot banana pepper that we didn't know we had. I see you have green beans that you picked this morning. Green beans, oh, you know, I've, I've quit, I quit picking green beans weeks ago. That was, uh, we've had quite a few people come and pick those. Yeah, when, when people ask. <laughs> buckets if, at a time. When people ask if I have any green beans, I say, I sure do. And the buckets under the plants, I tell you, help pick all you want. <laughs> So we quit picking and giving those away. It's just too hot. Oh my, I see some good sized tomatoes in here for an Amish paste. Well, you've that been a really good me. steward of the land, Mickey, and you've been really good about letting people glean from the extra and just like the word calls us to do. And, and not only you let them come pick, but we picked for them and delivered for them, so. Many. Yeah, many, quite a few. So even went through dog bites in people's yards to deliver them free vegetables. <laughs> True story, and I yes. think that's good. I think that's why God blesses you so good in the garden, Mickey, because you're so willing to share in your abundance. And well, from what I know, this is from experience. I mean, I've just been doing it for so long, and I certainly don't mind sharing it. And it's the electroculture part that I say that to people, and they look at me funny and. So I am glad that we could do a video and can kind of share it and, you know, people can judge for themselves whether they think it works or not. But for me, it works. These are the results. This is the results of my electroculture the way we do it here at Hills Mill Homestead. And I think it works really well. Proof is in that pudding of basket, baskets of pudding. Proof is in the pudding. And how many baskets and baskets. But anyway, we won't go on about that. Not too much longer. <laughs> But I mean, you know, it's the, almost the end of August and we're going to have tomatoes all the way to frost. Absolutely. And every year it's not like that. So we really are thankful for this year. And some of my peppers are just decided they just quit. But that's okay. We're tired of picking peppers too. Say that again. <laughs> but anyway, I hope some, uh, I hope everybody, I hope you get something out of this video. Um, this is just the way we do it here in Middle Tennessee, and it works. And I've been doing this for a long time, growing the, the tomatoes in the baskets, on the trellises, in the cattle panels, and on and on. And so this is the best way that I've learned how to do it. And I hope you enjoy the video. And stay tuned. We have lots of different things going to happen here at Hills Mill Homestead. And if you like the video, subscribe to our channel. Hit that thumbs up. I think I hear that that helps and all and such. But have a great day and a great weekend and a great week to come. And I'm going to continue picking some more vegetables. We will see you on the next video. Thank you for watching.